Here we have 6.8 simplifying a product and quotient involving square roots of negative numbers. So remember from the last concept, if you have a square root of a negative, we know it's not a real number, it's an imaginary number. And so that negative will come out as an i. So this becomes i times square root of 64 times square root of 144. Now we know the square root of 64 is 8, we know the square root of 144 is 12, and so then this becomes 96, I believe. Yes, 96i. Now here, same similar, same thing. So we got to take the square root out. We get, or take the negative out. It becomes an i. I get this, and I get this. And then I can put these two together, and I get um, i square root of 72 over 8, which is i square root of 9, which is i times 3, or 3i. Three now notice that I didn't put this over this first, because that only works if both the numerator and the denominator are real numbers. And because you're taking the square root of a negative answer, this is not going to be a real number. So you cannot make this one giant square root of a fraction until the i is completely out of the radical. Now that I don't have the square root of a negative, now I can apply that rule for the square roots that allows me to put it, the whole fraction under one giant um, square root. So be very ca careful with that because that is a common mistake is that people will put these two, and it'll matter over here, because over here you get negative and negative and it turns into a positive, and that can affect your response, okay? So be very, very, very careful, and especially in the next example, it will definitely affect your response. So you cannot put these together and multiply the insides if this is not a real number and this is not a real number. And I mean the whole thing is not a real number, and this whole thing is not a real number, okay? So because this is a negative, I have to take out the negative first, and that becomes i square root of 6. Here's a negative. I have to take that out. It becomes i square root of 2. Now I can take the i times the i and get i squared. I can take this real number square root and real number square root, and multiply those two together to get 12, square root of 12. Then I know that the square root of 12 um, actually simplifies into 2 square root of 3. And I also know that i squared is equal to negative 1. So this will become a negative 1. And so then the final response here is going to be negative 2 square root of 3. Now, had I done this problem incorrectly, okay, forgetting that this has to be a real number and this has to be a real number in order to multiply the insides, if I for had forgotten that and I just did the square root of negative 6 times negative 2, I would have gotten positive 12, and then my answer would have been 2 square root of 3, and done. But notice that's not the answer. The answer is negative 2 square root of 3. So you cannot do this rule if this radical and that radical are not real numbers. Once you take the i's out, then it does become an imaginary number times a real number. And this part is real. So the fact that you have a real factor here and a real factor there means you can multiply them together on the inside at that point once they are no longer negative inside the square roots. So similarly, we have to do the same for this one. So this i will come out, I get square root of 24. This i will come out, I get i square root of 2. Um, here the i's will actually reduce, and you get a giant square root of 24 over 2, because these are real parts now. And then you get the square root of 12, which is... 2 square root of 3, and it's positive. So notice that coincidentally, this one does end up being positive. But you really need to make sure that you're following um, 
those steps, taking out the eyes first and then seeing what you have later. So for this one, there's no dot in the middle, but you could assume that there is one. Um, so I take this out, I get an eye, I take this one out, I get an eye, and then the two eyes together multiplied make I squared. The two radicals together, now that they're not negative inside, I can multiply together, I get 81. And then I squared is negative one, square root of 81 is three. I'm sorry, it's not three, it's nine. And then negative one times nine is just negative nine. And so negative nine is the final response here.